Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In our previous video, we discussed pattern allowances. If you haven't watched it, check the link in the description below. While watching the previous video, did you guys wonder if we can use any sort of sand during the sand casting process? Well, the answer is no. There are different types of sand, right? These different types of sand have different properties. Hence, we are going to discuss the properties of molding sand in this video. First of all, we must know what exactly is molding sand. Also known as foundry sand, it is a sand which tends to pack well and hold its shape after being moistened and compressed or oiled or heated. Molding sand should have good porosity, flowability and collapsibility. Adhesiveness, cohesiveness and refractoriness are some more properties that are needed for molding sand. Let's talk about all these properties in detail, shall we? The first and most basic property of molding sand is porosity. Also known as permeability, it is a property of sand to allow gases to pass through it easily. As the molten metal is poured into the cavity, some gases dissolved in molten metal also enter the cavity. These gases try to escape as the molten metal starts to solidify. If the sand doesn't have sufficient porosity, these gases won't be able to escape and get trapped into the casting. As a result, holes and pores will be formed inside the final casting. Now let's move on to the next property that is flowability. It is the ability of molding sand to flow and show fluidic behavior when it is rammed. Due to this property of molding sand, it can fill the entire molding box and take its shape easily. Hence, the sand can be compressed and packed around the pattern conveniently. The molding sand must have high flowability to ensure that it will have a uniform density after compression. As a result, a good impression of the pattern inside the mold can be obtained. Increasing the clay and water content of the molding sand helps in increasing its flowability. The next property of molding sand that we will talk about is collapsibility. It is a property by which the molding sand collapses after the solidification of molten metal. For the metal to contract freely upon solidification, the sand should collapse. This will ensure that the contracting material or final casting is free from tearing and cracking. Adhesiveness is another property of molding sand. It is the ability of the sand which allows it to stick with another body. The sand must stick with the molding box and avoid falling out of the box when it is removed. For this purpose, it must possess sufficient adhesiveness. Now, what's the next property? It's cohesiveness. Sand particles have the property of sticking with each other and this property is called cohesiveness. This property is also referred to as the strength of the sand. As we know, the molding sand is poured into the molding box. If the sand doesn't have enough strength, it won't be able to hold its shape when the molten metal is being poured. This will cause damage to the mold and the final casting will suffer from defects. Hence, the molding sand must have sufficient strength to hold its shape and produce mold of the desired shape during the casting process. There are two types of sand strength, green strength and dry strength. Green sand is a type of sand which possesses a high moisture content. Green strength is the strength of the sand in its moist state. Adequate green strength allows the mold to retain its shape during the process. On the other hand, dry sand is a type of sand which contains low moisture content. Dry strength is the strength of the sand in its dry state. Sufficient dry strength allows the sand mold to withstand erosive forces caused by the molten metal. Are we done with the properties? Well, no. The next and last property of sand is refractoriness. It is the property of the sand which allows it to withstand high temperatures while avoiding fusion with the molten metal. If the molding sand lacks sufficient refractoriness, it will melt and fuse with the molten metal. As a result, the quality of the final casting will be spoiled. Hence, the molding sand must possess sufficient refractoriness to provide the final castings of excellent quality. That's all for today, guys. In this video, we discussed the properties of molding sand. For any molding sand to be suitable for sand casting, it must possess the six properties that we have studied. We'll be back with more content soon. Until then, stay tuned and stay safe. Bye.